Äh, <lacht> Team Talk. <lacht> Zombie Talk. Mode, Zombie Mode. <lacht> <lacht> Team Talk 15. No, let's not say the number then. No. Oh. Only 15. Ja, yeah, only 15. Okay. <lacht> nice. Again. All right. Currently, when we ship out cameras, it's uh, all wrapped in bubble wrap, cardboard yeah. boxes, so it's not 100% perfect, but there is a solution. And that solution is a custom hard case, mm -hmm. which can be reused, not just for shipping to the customer, to the receiver of the camera, yeah. but also for taking it on set or to the lab or wherever you're just doing storing it. it everything. Exactly. And uh, we looked at different hard case manufacturers and evaluated from very cheap to solid priced options mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and looked at the hinges, the valve, the clamps, the, the rubber, the, the rubber, the rubber the ceiling, plastics. the material itself, how does it feel, how brittle is it and so on. Mm -hmm. And opted for the best but not the cheapest option basically, which is quite okay for yeah. a high-end device I guess. Yeah, for the same. Exactly, yeah. Yes. You want to keep the camera, you want to keep the case, so it should be all yes. high quality. Indeed. And uh, the bigger challenge uh, proved to be the foam inside the hard case. Where the hard case, there are many options, but uh, when we looked at different uh, materials for the foam, it was quite difficult to find a supplier that actually provided the material he said he would on the data sheet. But for the special foam, you the mean, special not just foam. The yes. normal foam, but for electrostatic discharge proofed foam. Exactly. It also There's looks good. The normal foam, which is just soft basically, mm -hmm. but uh, like when you stroke the cat, it charges you up or it even charges up the stuff inside the hard case. So yeah. the cat is inside the hard case and the camera strokes the cat and charges up and that can be very dangerous because if that charge reaches a certain potential and then goes into some parts of the electronics, it can damage parts, components, uh, integrated circuits. It's a very small risk, but the risk still... The risk is not very high, but if it, for example, safe, sorry. burns the sensor, then that is an expensive uh, problem. No. And so uh, the foam we selected is not just uh, anti-static, anti-static, like, you know, the pink foam, for example, in sometimes you have electronics wrapped in pink foam. That pink foam is uh, very uh, uh, typical for uh, anti-static discharge foam, so it doesn't charge up by itself. No. But it doesn't prevent you from already being charged up from touching stuff inside that foam. So the, even better, the next upgrade, so to say, for the foam, is if it's conductive or even better, dissipative. Mm -hmm. So it's a foam that has a high internal resistance, but is conductive. So if electronics inside the foam are, like in the anti-static foam, not charging up by themselves, but even if you are already charged up mm -hmm. and you go to that foam and touch the foam, the shock that you would transmit goes into the foam and kind of wears off there instead of going into the electronics. So the dissipative option is the best foam you can get. And again, that was quite difficult to get because all the manufacturers claimed they had certain uh, surface resistances and when we measured them, they didn't. <laughs> or it wasn't dissipative at all. Yeah. So weird, but we found a solution now. I hope it will work out. We need to still uh, mill out different compartments because the next challenge is that every hard case order is different. Like you can get the camera with enclosure soon, with different modules, then there's the extreme remote, maybe you want to put that there in as well. Yeah. So we then never know what will be the package. There's not the package, there are different packages yeah. all the time. So how do we uh, have the foam provide that flexibility? That's the challenge as well. So what we want to do currently is have different kind of compartments inside the mm -hmm. hard case. And depending on the order, we will put different foam molds or foam shapes in and fill that with the matching components yeah. then. Maybe even do custom stuff. Sure. Maybe. Also you possible. Want to put something else in there, like. And even if you have uh, received a hard case already with a certain filling of foam, mm -hmm. and you want to add a different, let's say you get the extra remote later on, you could get the same 
piece of foam that holds the action remote later on and then kind of modularly adjust your sure, yeah. case that you take on set. Yeah. So that's definitely very sustainable. Yes. yes. One of the topics yeah. is that we have on our secret list, the development of what is called the Axiom Micro. Yeah, the Axiom has evolved a little bit. Well, it, it shrunk, but <laughs> the big news is not the camera shrunk, because that's a new thing. <laughs> it's just the, the sensor has basically shrunk. And the exactly. The sensor is a third of an inch, mm -hmm. sized only, rolling shutter. Because but uh, the resolution is slightly above HD, mm -hmm. full HD. Full HD, yeah. 2304 pixels mm -hmm. by 1296. Nice. So that means full HD is totally possible. Plus, you could do electronic image stabilization, for example. Yeah, if you have a little bit of space, yeah. You have the additional pixels, indeed. Yes. And it can do 60 frames. It can go up to 60 frames, I've heard. Yes, that is also correct. And it has a C mount. Indeed. <laughs> and. Uh, 12-bit RAW from the mm -hmm. sensor and up to 12 f-stops dynamic range. So, but let's not uh, over oversell, like, it. oversell the sensor <laughs> in particular because yeah, we, the sensor is small and cheap, but that's the whole point of the XM Micro. But now you might be wondering, guys, what are you doing? Finish the XM Beta, <laughs> not start new projects. Well, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, this is kind this of is a thing that managed it all on its own. This is not initially our project, but as the story goes, here you go. Two students from Germany sat on the Chaos Communication Congress mm -hmm. and uh, were looking at the Exxon Beta and uh, talking with people from the team there, hacking and developing stuff. And they were very uh, sad that they couldn't afford the Exxon Beta because the sensor is expensive and everything is high end. Yeah, I get so that. For for students who just want to like hack around and try stuff. Obviously that's not an easy thing to just try out. So, and so what did they do? What did they do? <laughs> well, the only thing that you can do if you can't get something, you just make your own. <laughs> that's nice. That's really the, the philosophy of this whole project. I yes, really like that. Indeed. And the Curse Communication Congress is also the perfect setting for this. You yeah. just get together and say, well, let's develop a new camera now. <laughs> <laughs> they did everything, just just smaller and then less of it, I guess. Okay, it's exactly. it's also the FPGA, just a smaller yes. one. The architecture is very similar, like inspired by the Exo mm -hmm. Beta. You also you have, have the, the module slots. The plug-in module slots, exactly. There's a board for uh, image processing. It's the same chip, the Sync mm -hmm. 7020 in the Exo Beta, mm -hmm. 7010 in the Exo Micro. So same architecture, just a smaller edition, basically. Yeah. The FPGA board is also off the shelf. Slightly less resources than the microset, which we use in the XM Beta. But it's cheaper. It's cheaper, and there's just one board on top of the FPGA board, which hosts the image sensor on one side, mm -hmm. soldered onto the PCB, and uh, the interfaces and a bit of support logic and so on, everything you need to run the sensor basically on the yeah. other side. And 3D printed. Um, Currently, a 3D printed lens mount. <laughs> and uh, laser cut enclosure, mm -hmm. so it's definitely a prototype currently. You can't buy it, you have to assemble it yourself if you want to. Everything is open source, of course, and we will link to the sources on GitHub mm -hmm. in the comment section, definitely. Very cool project, very well done. And I've heard they were very young and talented yes. people. Very it. talented students. We met them at uh, Maker Faire Berlin recently, where the hardware premiered in the second generation. I thought it was at the KS Computer Club. That's when the idea was started. Oh, shit. And the development started. <laughs> but the actual camera, like in operation, mm -hmm. we demoed for the first time to the public at Maker for Berlin in, was it in May or June? I don't know. Now we are already at uh, version two of the design. Mm -hmm. And they're still not entirely happy. And some things are not working yet. But the general kind of proof of concept is done. We recorded yeah. footage at uh, Maker for Berlin. Uh, we had live view on the big monitor, mm -hmm. but now there's a third generation, version three in the works, and hopefully, or I think they want to be ready by the next uh, CCC. So that's uh, around Christmas again. Cool, props and to you. Then 
if that works out, maybe we will also uh, start producing a few prototypes, so actually bring to the masses, well not the masses, but uh, developers who are interested <laughs> in it. Because currently you have to solve that yourself. That's the deal, kind of. There yeah, is no product. And uh, in terms of prices, uh, the small image sensor means it's much cheaper. Yeah. The smaller FPGA means that is much cheaper. In fact, with, so with sensors, you really pay for the for the area. Yeah, basically, exactly. right. Yeah. Yes. So everything here is kind of uh, focused on uh, making it cheap and available and mm -hmm. small and compact. That's mm -hmm. why it's called the Axiom Micro, I guess, because it's focused on everything being smaller. And uh, we don't know how much it will actually cost once it's finished or produced. But currently, the sum of the components, the so-called bill of materials, that means all the chips, all the uh, things, connectors, yeah. the printed circuit boards, the PCBs, uh, amount to around 150 euros. But that's without uh, the lens, the lens mount, the no lens mount acrylic yet. case. Exactly, it's just the electronic components, not the costs. It means to put them together, yeah, sure, to, no to labor, no build it, anything. or no parts of the enclosure. So we'll see how and it will be actually, but still very affordable. <laughs> so at Maker Fair, we had uh, guys uh, running the Axiom Micro uh, connected to a laptop, mm -hmm. which means the video stream from the camera mm -hmm. is recorded over gigabit ethernet on the laptop. And the laptop is also used to control various parts like exposure time and so on. Yeah. But it works, it's recorded in a raw format already, maybe not sure. the same raw format as in the Axiom Beta, we currently envisioned to be, but yeah. And these pictures should show that <laughs> it's actually alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. So tune in again next time when the foam is done and the home is here, where the heart is or the foam is, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting worse and worse every time we try. So let's exit now. See you too.